for a support package. The communities endured this horrendous event should be supported, and I know will be, across the whole House. Yeah. Yeah. Nigel Farage. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Yesterday we witnessed some extraordinary celebratory scenes outside Britain's prisons, where in some cases serious career criminals were released. And this to make way for, yes, rioters, but equally those who've said unpleasant things on Facebook and elsewhere on social media. Does the Prime Minister understand there is a growing feeling of anger in this country that we are living through two-tier policing and a two-tier justice system? I'm angry to be put in a position of having to release people who should be in prison because the last government broke the prison system. And the Prime Minister was repeatedly warned. He had his own release scheme. He was repeatedly warned that he had to adopt the scheme that we put in place. The former Justice Minister said, if we don't do it, we'll have to get down on our knees and pray. The p police chiefs made it absolutely clear in a letter to him before the election that he needed to take action, saying that they wouldn't be able to discharge their duties and saying the risk was loss of an ability to detain suspects. That means, Mr Speaker, an inability to arrest people committing offences. That's how bad it was. And they warned uh, the, the Leader of the Opposition that further delays until after the general election will increase the risk significantly. What did he do? He delayed and increased the risks. Yeah. 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 Mm. Sorry, Mr Speaker. I welcome the Government's swift action to bring railways pack back into public ownership. Great British Railways will deliver much needed reform, ensuring the network serves both passengers and rail freight effectively. So can the Prime Minister explain how Labour's ambitious railway plan will also deliver improvements to rail infrastructure to ensure my constituents get the service they deserve at Luton Station? Prime Minister. Well, I thank you for raising that important uh, matter. One of the first bills that we introduced was to reform our railways after 14 years of chaos. Great British Railways will unite track and train under a single leadership, and that means closer collaboration across the industry and faster, more effective decisions on critical infrastructure. And I know uh, how vital that will be in relation to both Luton and Leegrave stations in her constituency. We are carefully considering the best approach, uh, but I can assure her we are committed to ensuring our railways will be open to everyone. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Mr yeah. Speaker. Today is back British Farming Day. The previous government let our farmers down and, in their incompetence, underspent the farming budget by £100 million. Will the Prime Minister deny rumours that his government plans to take advantage of the Conservatives' failure by removing that £100 million permanently? Farmers across the country want to know that the Prime Minister will increase the agriculture budget, as the Lib Dem manifesto proposed to speed up the rollout of the new environmental land management schemes to support profitable, sustainable and nature-friendly farming. Well, I thank you for that question. It is a really important issue, and our rural communities were neglected by the previous government, and that is why confidence is at an all-time low. And what we will do is to protect farmers from being undercut in trade deals, make the supply chain work more fairly and prevent shop rises in bills by switching to GB Energy. We won't preempt the budget in relation to this, but we will put the support in place. Thank you. Luke Murphy. Thank you, Mr <laughs> Speaker. Many of my constituents, including those at Chapel Gate, have told me about the so-called management agents who charge them rip-off service fees mm. and then fail to provide even the most basic of maintenance. Yeah. Many of them spend hours each week battling with these agents just to ensure that they and their neighbours are not fleeced in their own homes. Will the Prime Minister recommit this government to act where the previous government failed to reform the leasehold system, which is archaic, outdated and feudal? Yeah. Prime Minister. Well, can I first welcome the first ever Labour MP for Basingstoke. Yeah. And yes, we will reiterate our commitment to act to bring the feudal leasehold system to an end and ensure leaseholders can benefit from more rights, power and protections over their homes. Yeah. Yeah. O'Hara. Mr Speaker, international law is clear. Dropping £2,000 bombs 
on densely populated civilian areas is a crime. And it's beyond dispute that Israel has used F-35s to do exactly that. Yet the government has chosen to exempt F-35 components from the arms license suspension, when all it had to do was say that Israel could not be the end user if UK manufactured parts were included. Last week, Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister stood at that dispatch box and he said, we either comply with international law or we do not. Ah, right. Why has he chosen not to? Prime Minister. We are complying with international law. We've set out our reasoning, and I think all fair-minded members of the House would support the decision that we've taken. The most important thing now is that we get a ceasefire in place. That is one of the topics that I'll be discussing on Friday to ensure that the remaining hostages uh, can come out, that aid that's desperately needed can go in, and that we can start the process to a two-state solution, which is the only way to lasting peace. Yeah. Yeah. has a proud defence heritage and in my constituency of Dunfermline and Dollar that continues with the dockyard at Resyth constructing Type 31 frigates for the Royal Navy as long as, along with the local supply chain of local SMEs. So will the Prime Minister ensure the Strategic Defence Review team visits areas of, areas of strategic importance such as Fife so they can engage fully with the local supply chain and ensure the SDSR supports, Britain, supports Britain's security as well as local economies? Yeah. Prime Minister. Well, I thank him for that question and for championing his constituency, including the work at Rothside Dockyard. The Strategic Defence Review will ensure that defence is central both to security and to economic growth and prosperity. The review will consult widely, including across the devolved nations, and I know the reviewers recognise the strategic importance of constituencies like his. And I will ensure that he gets the chance to meet the relevant minister to discuss the particular issues in his constituency. Dr Neil Hudson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. <coughs> the previous Conservative Government committed to a rebuild of Whips Cross Hospital, the Princess Alexandra Hospital in Harlow, and the establishment, yeah. 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 And the establishment of a new community... Oh, oh. You have to sit down a minute. Luke. I'm determined to hear this question. I don't expect the front bench to be shouting me down, and it won't happen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The previous Conservative government. Trying to join in again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The previous Conservative government committed to a rebuild of Whips Cross Hospital, the Princess Alexandra Hospital in Harlow, and the establishment of a new community diagnostic centre at St. Margaret's Hospital in Epping. Will the new Labour government honour these commitments and mm. progress these projects in full, mm. which are so vital yeah, to improving yeah. the health yeah, services yeah. needed by my constituents of Epping Forest? And if it helps the Prime Minister at all with his answer, these services will also help some of the constituents of his health secretary mm. just next door in Ilford North. Yeah. Yeah. Prime Minister. Well, 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 look, he's right to champion the hospitals in his constituency, quite right to do so. The problem with what the last government promised was this. They promised 40 new hospitals. Yeah, yeah. The problem is there weren't 40, they weren't new, and many of them weren't hospitals. So we need to review uh, what we can do and put it on a sustainable, deliverable basis. But we will, and he's right to champion those in his constituency. And Lise Bidgley. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Last week, I met my constituent, Cheryl Corbell, mother of Olivia Pratt Corbell, the nine-year-old tragically murdered in 2022. Cheryl is campaigning for Olivia's law, which would compel convicted criminals to attend court and face the judge and receive their sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will my right honourable friend commit to supporting Olivia's law and meet Cheryl to discuss how we can move this forward without delay? Yeah. 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 Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, in the King's speech, we confirmed that we intend to introduce legislation this session so courts have the power to order the most serious offenders to attend their sentencing hearings. This is really important, uh, and I know it's felt across the House, because to deprive victims and their families